Hello number ones, welcome back to my channel, this is The Metaton speaking and today we have got the Manchira, a new element of armour belonging to the Japanese feudal era. So this armour was made by Iron Mountain Armoury and it's a kind gift that I received from, the, uh, from Michael, the CEO, so big thanks to Iron Mountain Armoury, they believe in this channel and they do like to support this community and of course in exchange I like giving them a little shout out because of the excellent work that they make. They both, they made both this Tosei Gusoku and this Manchira. But today we're going to focus on this. So what is it? So we've got an outside garment and it's made of hemp in this case, but inside it works as a backing for a myriad of um, hexagons of metal. And in this case it's steel, but originals could have also been either steel or iron, depending on the situation. Every time you see this, this beautiful um, beehive pattern here, for every hexagon you see, there is an hexagon of metal inside. So, it's an interesting sort of armour, but of course it's light armour, particularly if compared to the more protective plate door. Now, there is one picture that I'd like to show you that I think is really, really interesting, because when you receive this uh, manchira or kikogane do, to use the Japanese term, um, you can't really see the hexagons of metal because they are sewn inside the fabric. So, uh, Michael has kindly showed me and provided me with a picture that shows both the replica, so that you can see what the hexagons of metal look like, the thickness and everything, but also uh, you can see it right next to a period original. So, as you can see, this is the picture. On the right, we have the sort of of metal hexagons that we find in the uh, Kikoganedo that we received from Iron Mountain Armory and as you can see it's steel and it does have a reasonable amount of thickness so this is not a piece of sheet metal this is stuff that is going to provide a certain level of protection but one thing that you can see yes it's an excellent replica but it is quite a lot bigger than the original the original being 0.5 millimeters and the replica being around the range of 0.8 so why the choice of making it bigger well the reason is that basically this sort of armor is now produced mainly for the european market and i suppose american market as well and generally speaking a european body and an american body is of course bigger than a period historical japanese body of 500 years ago or whatever century we are replicating. So clearly the armor needed to be adjusted and that's the reason why the uh, Kiko Ganedo produced now is bigger than the sort of originals that you sometimes see in museums. So why would a samurai wear something like this if they already owned something like that? Interestingly enough, you don't really have to choose. You can wear this over this and it's something I'm going to show you. So in this video, I'm going to wear this. We're going to try and move around with it with a few weapons and then I'm going to wear both of them. But I've already tried it and I've got to say that yes, it does increase slightly the amount of weight you carry on you as you go to battle as a samurai, but not that much. And it does provide a lot of extra protection. A subsequent layer between the metal of your armor and the clothing you would wear underneath. So together with your door is interesting because what's going to do is that yes, if something manages to penetrate the door, very difficult thing to do, but let's say there's something for whatever reason does manage to penetrate the door, then it will have to also penetrate the plates of the manchira to be able to get through you. So it's an extra layer of protection in case of main armor failure. But most importantly and more probable as an, as an, as an example, this is there to fill in some of the gaps of that sort of armor. Because you see, similarly to medieval European plate, you you cannot cover any, the entirety of the body of a warrior in plate everywhere. You can't just surround him in a ball of steel and expect him to perform as a soldier on the, on the battlefield, to quote Matt Easton. There are some areas that will be exposed. So in medieval plate armor, usually those will be covered in mail. But in this case, they use this sort of Japanese equivalent of a brigandine to uh, fill in the gaps and make sure that the enemy cannot exploit those gaps that are going to be there for mobility reasons. So let me show you. In this case, if we look at the plate that we've got here, you will see that in here, often, there is nothing. Now, clearly, around this waist area, you will be wearing um, something that is similar to an obi turned around your body three times. So you will have a few layers of fabric, and then you will underneath you will have your sturdy um, garments that you normally wear. But of course, it's not as protective as metal. So, if something were to go through this section and gut you, well, they will encounter small plates that hopefully 
will make sure that nothing can penetrate. So why didn't they cover this entire part in plate as well? Well, the reason is again, mobility. You have to understand that the more rigid your defense becomes, the more protective it becomes, but at the same time, it's harder to move in it. Now you can move in this absolutely with no problems, but if they had had this breastplate go all the way down to the level of the belt that you have in your jeans, then it would have been a problem to bend because it's plate and plate doesn't bend. So there are some sections that are purposely left unprotected by plate in order to allow you to do what a soldier needs to do, fight and move in his gear. This one instead, because of its less protective, more mobile pattern, uh, it allows you to bend and move because it's inside fabric. There is a certain level of give. Therefore, you can wear this all the way down and still move very well. And therefore, it, it was excellent to protect those areas that will be somehow, somewhat exposed. Then you can say, but what about the armpit underneath the armor of the samurai that you cannot cover in plate because it would inhibit your ability to use your weapons. Well, again, uh, Iron Mountain Armory produces this as well, but they did have some other forms of this kind of brigandine that was worn exactly underneath the armpit and whatnot. So the areas of your samurai door that represent the weak spots can be covered with this. So would there be situations in which you would only wear this, so use it as a standalone armor? Absolutely. I mean, this can be worn as a discrete form of armor, concealed armor, if you will. You can wear it underneath period clothing and it will be very difficult to spot. Again, it's light. It allows you to move freely. And when I say light, I mean extremely light. So you can travel. And even if you don't belong to the samurai class, maybe you're a very rich merchant, this would be a good way to have some, a certain degree of protection for personal defense without having to wear armor that, you know, it's restricted to the bushy class anyways. As one last point I'd like to make about the manchira, uh, which of course I only talked about stabbing, but this is excellent against slashing as well. Uh, it would be very difficult to slash through this. And although a very powerful strike might penetrate, it needs to be extremely powerful. And it does provide, as you can see, protection the, around the sides of your neck and the back of your neck. But an interesting thing to consider is that this makes absolutely zero noise. On the other hand, this one, when you walk in it, it makes you sound like a flock of sheep. So it's a no-brainer to imagine that someone who needed silence, someone who needed not to be identified, would use only this. So it still protects you if something goes wrong, and by the way, it protects you from the back as well, but no one is going to hear you. So perhaps the shinobi on a mission to spy on someone could use something like this because it's difficult to detect, particularly if you're wearing a cloak and it's raining etc. and it's dark and it makes zero noise. So I was actually quite impressed. So in terms of mobility, today I've just moved around a little bit using some weapons, just a tiny bit, but I am working on a collaboration video with Thrand from Thane Thrand channel about full mobility wearing a manchita. We have already done this in the past and uh, it, there was a situation in which we did a collaboration video where I wore my full plate armor in extreme conditions. So I went to the mountain with the snow. You'll find a link in the description to see how much snow, but also the cold would impede my ability to use samurai armor and fight effectively. And he did loads of interesting things because he can do uh, wheels, he can roll on the ground, climb trees. That guy has got the agility of three monkeys. We decided to join forces again and try and test this in two different ways both on my channel and his channel and create a crossover. So if you're interested in this kind of armor, light armor, and you're thinking, yeah, I'd like to use it, but how movable is it really? Then we will show you soon. Just give us a couple of weeks. Last but not least, how close of a replica to real originals is this? Well, it is extremely close. I mean, let me show you here. I have some pictures of some originals and as you can see, the overall shape is the same. The hive pattern is the same and colors, of course, you, know, well, you have variation in originals as well. And you can ask Iron Mountain Amory to produce the manchina with the colors that you of your liking. You know, they've got like quite a lot of possibilities for you for you to choose from.
Okay, so this was a brief video to talk about this, but again, big thanks and shout out to Iron Mountain Armory for supporting the community of Noble Ones and the Metatron channel. You will find a link in the description below if you're interested in purchasing and ordering this sort of armor. And if you have any questions about the Manchita, let me know because I will answer to all these questions in the dedicated video we'll make on mobility wearing a Manchita. Thank you so much for your time as always Noble Ones and thank you for watching. I hope that this video was interesting. And if you liked it, please thumbs up, share it with your friends. And if you're yet not a member of this community, become a Noble One. Subscribe to my channel for more content from the Metatron. And remember, the Metatron that spread his wings. Goodbye. <laughs>